Today, I want to talk to you about hyperdimensional computing. Before we dive deep into this, I should explain to you exactly what hyperdimensional computing is and why I want to talk to you about it. So, hyperdimensional computing as a broad concept is a concept that is uh, similar to neural networks, but is a competing framework to modern neural networks. So modern neural networks, they start off with the perceptron in the 1950s, uh, and then we don't see a lot of innovation with them until the 1980s. And then the biggest innovation that we see in the 1980s is the introduction of RNNs and backpropagation, and specifically that backpropagation mechanism is uh, the main thing in particular, and a main split occurs there, right? So backpropagation is essentially uh, you have every model has a feedforward mechanism, which means that you pass an input in and then you get an output. But with backwards propagation, you have an input, you pass it in, you get an output, and then you pass that output back over the layers and then back through and then you backpropagate and you get the back to the input. And then that sequence of events is uh, what transformers do, what all modern neural networks do, uh, mo most modern neural networks do. And uh, everything that you're familiar with, with them, is based off of that. Uh, and then that introduces a few math concepts as well. The first concept that it introduces is gradients. So when you talk about like gradient descents, um, exploding gradients, anything along those lines, gradients come in because of that backpropagation process. And gradients come in and they increase the mathematical and computational complexity of the model. There's no way around that. And then so when you look at like transformers, things like that, they're very mathematically inefficient. When uh, you hear like a lot of experts, a lot of people are uh, kind of going against transformers or, or against LLM models in their current form, things like that. A lot of people are hinging and talking about this particular issue. When you dive into it and when you understand it, the mathematics behind current LLM models is kind of bad. <laughs> and, and so uh, it's, to me, uh, we lucked into a process, right? And then when it comes to these mathematical processes, when it comes to these natural mathematical processes, what I've found just you know, through data exploration across multiple uh, fields of study, uh, not just within AI, is that there's multiple general ways to tackle these problems, right? Like mathematically, there's multiple ways to uh, solve like the two plus two, right? Or, or, or like uh, to get to a sum of four, I can get to like, I can utilize a plethora of mathematical mechanisms in order to get there. And some of them are more efficient. Some of them are less efficient, but they all get to four, right? As long as we get to four, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. And then uh, that's kind of a like where we're at with AI and transformers. We can get to four, right? And then so like it's, it's do we get to four in the math in the most mathematically simplistic way possible? No, and we, we know that immediately, right? Um, but so this is what we have for now. But the question is what is next and what is beyond that and this is the exploration of that if you're interested in that what is next what is beyond hyperdimensional computing uh, is one of the most interesting uh, different directions that i've seen compared to uh in the modern neural networks and modern transformers so Bottom line with hyperdimensional computing is it's literally based off of the brain, off of the cerebellum in the brain. And then so no backpropagation. And the idea is very simplistic. It utilizes the literal brain mapping of, say, like a fruit fly, which uh, they store information. And our brain stores information in hyperdimensional parameters, right? Meaning that like if we take a word, uh, our brain stores it in, in essentially binary, but like in a hyperdimensional binary, meaning like 5,000 characters of binary, right? And then like, uh, and then uh, within that, there's uh, different, you can do different uh, operators within that. But for simplicity's sake, for hyperdimensional computing sake, we want to make those operators as simplistic as possible. So we give it 
two operators in hyperdimensional computing. That's it, right? So we can have uh, hyperdimensions, meaning that like we can take a word and we can break it down into like five thousand um, individual binary characters, so, so like zero, one, 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 uh, zero, etc. Right? And then what we can do with that is we can add or multiply or add and multiply, <laughs> and, and and that's it. Can't subtract, can't divide, can't uh, do any other operators besides add and multiply. But with our hyperdimensions and our multiply, we can essentially store information, text, etc. So that's what we're doing. And that's what we're looking at with this model here. And then so this model, and I'll share a link to this Colab notebook, is my first iteration of building this out. I built out a hyperdimensional computing neural network. So I blended hyperdimensions with neural networks because so neural networks, if you're not familiar with them, they don't store information as high dimensional vectors. They store information as word vectors. Um, so I essentially there's a translation process that occurs here between word vectors and high dimensional vectors. And that's what occurs and, and there, that um, like a translation process occurs within my model. But other than that, this is a simple encoder and decoder, right? And then so uh, I run this and we get our training loss and then I run this. Uh, but the bottom line I want to showcase is this, right? And then so I showcase this and I'm, I never have seen a training loss like this uh, where it, it accuracy is 100%, like just 100% like across, across the board and instantaneously. And then with, with this, this is a simple data set. It's the spam or ham uh, IMDB data set. And then so I said, okay, 100% uh, off the bat, that's phenomenal. What if we do and we run like different experiments with this, right? Like this uh, hyperdimensional computing and this hyperdimensional computing uh, neural network. And then so in this instance, this is a different data set. Um, and then it's uh, uh, a different data set and then different optimizer that I utilize. Uh, and we go through and I still get like pretty insane uh, loss rates after this is just after training one epoch. right? And then so after one epoch of training, we go from uh, 1.5 down to a 0.6. So if I let this run, I mean, it could get very, theoretically very close to, again, 100 percent accuracy on this, which would be like absurd. Right? And then so I say, OK, uh, at this point, I'm going to give it kind of an ultimate test. And this is what I'm running here. And then so I do a few different things in this. What we're looking at here, what, we're, what is running right this second here is pretty cool to me, uh, which is like, I'm like, okay, I want to combine all of this, right? Can I combine um, hyper com hyperdimensional computing and uh, particle swarm optimization? And then what happens if I do that? And then up here, I'm experimenting with uh, on a different data set, like a far more complex data set where I utilize uh, essentially um, it can put it into four categories, into four groups uh, of data. Uh, and then I'm utilizing I, I, it's a standard data set. I forget the data, the AG news data set. And then so the AG news data set can break it down into four different categories and then it breaks it down and then I run through and then I run through and then I just do very simple uh, operations within this. And then, as you can see, uh, within this, the accuracy does go down pretty significantly uh, lower, right? But these training loss rates and the validation, like all of these loss rates are pretty insane to me working with transformers models like this. These are insane numbers. And that's what is attracting to me and attractive to me about this HDC concept overall <laughs> and, and why I'm playing around with it and why I'm going to continue to play around with it because uh, of this. Right. And then uh, and then this is intriguing to me, too. Just like this is uh, my question to myself was, can you um, utilize particle swarm optimization within this? And, and we can see that we can. Right. And we can see the loss rate uh, levels out pretty quickly after three epochs. It stopped like fourth. We're not getting any new data. And that's expected to me having dealt with uh, particle swarm optimization before, and I can fix this, I can go through this, but this tells me that these two things can work in conjunction with each other. And then so uh, ending this here, I think this is a good note to end this on, right? Like all of this is experimentation. It's uh, 
It's playing around. To me, this is like uh, playing around with computer chemistry. That's exactly what this is, right? This is uh, the chemistry of Python, the, pe the chemistry of AI, the chemistry of computers. And uh, at this point, we're chemists. <laughs> I, I, am in, I am performing alchemy uh, within this and then playing around with these cool mixtures and putting them together and then seeing what happens. But then when you do that, you do that's how you get... Uh, breakthroughs and a lot of cool things that come out of this. And then to me, the, it's just the only bottleneck right now is people don't understand how to perform this alchemy yet, how to perform this chemistry. And, uh, that's why I, I'm making this content, like to try to educate people more and more on those lines. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.